Oh, should I? Yes. Oh, all right, then. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many games of chess you and I have played over the years, Jules, and yet you obstinately remain an atrocious player. Well, I don't like playing out of doors. But in this weather... Well... Would you like another game? Indoors. I should like another beer. Then you shall have one. Hmm. Sure. Yes, Jules? Do you remember the Princess de Verre? What on earth makes you ask a question like that? Oh, I don't know. Losing my queen to you, perhaps. <laughs> oh, thank you. You know, it made me think of the royal families of Europe for some reason, and high society in general. Mm. Not that I've ever been that involved in high society. I don't move in those exalted circles, but once, if you remember, I was very much involved in them, and all because of the princess. May Gray and society. She was a remarkable old woman. The Princess de Verre? Yes. Yeah. Do you remember how it all started? I was clearing up my desk in the Quai des Orfèvres one morning. Clearing up the work you should have done? Yeah, uh, the paperwork, yes. When I got a message from the director instructing me to go to the Quai d'Orsay, the Foreign Office wished to see an inspector capable of assuming responsibilities. I took Jean Vier with me. Chief Inspector Maigret. Mm, how do you do? This is Inspector Jean Vier. How do you do? Ah, yes. Take a seat, please. Oh, thank you. This is a, a somewhat exceptional situation. Uh, may I introduce Mademoiselle Jacquette Larieux? Oh, how do you do? Monsieur. Mademoiselle Larieux is, or rather was, the housekeeper of one of the most distinguished of our former ambassadors, the Count de Saint Hilaire. You've probably heard of him. Um, She's well, been in his service for over 40 years. 42, monsieur. This morning, Mademoiselle Larieux discovered him in his study. Dead. He seems to have been... Murdered. Shot several times. Hmm. You called the local police? Uh, no. Mademoiselle Larieux thought it better to come directly here. She has spent a large part of her life in the diplomatic world and considered that although the Count was no longer engaged in active service, some discretion was necessary. Uh, she felt she should approach a responsible official first. I see. A uh, well-known diplomat, the newspapers you know. Although I am authorised to inform you that the Count de Saint-Hilaire was not in the possession of any state secrets, and that you must not look for any political reason for his death. Must not? I suggest that you accompany Mademoiselle Larieux to the Count's residence in the Rue Saint-Dominique. I will come with you. Well, I... Uh, don't worry. I shall not interfere. I am coming simply to make sure that there is nothing there which might embarrass you. Uh, you are right, Mademoiselle. The Count was shot several times. As I told you. Quite. At jean -Vier, the local police should be informed. Right, Chief. And get onto the criminal records office. Try and get Meurs. He's a good man. And Dr. Paul, we need his report. Right. Mademoiselle, uh, can you tell me where the phone is, please? In the hall. Thank you. Mm. Mm. Ah, this is interesting. Huh? It would appear the Count was busy correcting proofs of his memoirs. Uh, really? Uh, two volumes have already appeared. I'm sure there is nothing to worry about. He was the most discreet of men. Uh, however... Well, what are you doing now, Monsieur Cormier? It is my duty to make quite sure that there aren't any papers here, the divulgation of which would be inopportune. Divulgation? Ah, yes. Here are the letters. Yeah, but they should prove harmless. Or letters from whom? It's an old story which everybody knows at the Quai d'Orsay. They can have nothing to do with this affair. But there are hundreds of them. Hardly surprising. It's a correspondence stretching over 50 years. In correspondence? Yeah, from the Princess de Verre to the Count de Saint-Hilaire. Hmm. Uh, however, there seems to be nothing else of importance. Look, I must ask you to remove nothing from this flat at present. I do not think that will be necessary, Chief Inspector. However, once again, I must recommend prudence and discretion. Listen, prudence oh, and... Yes, and hmm? men are on their way, Chief. Ah, good. Would you show Monsieur Cromier out, Jean Vier? Oh, right, Chief. Sir? Uh, yeah, I shall ring you, if you don't mind, uh, to, to find out how this things way, are sir. Uh, going. We'll get in touch if we need to. Good. If you will excuse me, Chief Inspector, I would like to get on with my housework. In a moment, Mademoiselle. First, I should like a word with you. 
Well? Uh, do you sleep in this flat? I have a room of my own. There are no other servants. It has not been necessary. I have tended the Count's every need for 42 years. Yeah, as you remarked earlier. How old are you? As if that is of importance. 71. And the Count? He was a little older. Mm. When did you last see him alive? Last night, at 10 o'clock, just before I went to bed. Was he expecting anyone? It's unlikely. Although his nephew sometimes calls late in the evening, he lives quite near. Uh, his name? Mazarin. Alain Mazarin. You don't like him. Oh, this morning, what happened? I got up as usual at six o'clock and washed. I had my breakfast, cleaned the kitchen, prepared coffee for the Count, and discovered his body as you find it now. I went straight to the Quai d'Orsay, as you know. Oh, she was a stiff-necked old girl. I didn't know what to make of her. I went on questioning her, but I didn't get very far. Of course not. But I did ascertain that the windows were locked when she found the Count in his study. There were no signs of any forced entry. Nothing appeared to be missing. And uh, most importantly, that she and the Count were the only people to possess keys to the flat. Moyers and Dr. Pole arrived while I was still questioning her. Morning, Chief Inspector. Ah, glad we got you, Moyers. And you, Dr. Pole. Uh, morning, Megre. Well, let's have a look at him. Here he is. <clears throat> I should like to go out. I should like to go to church. Uh, later, perhaps. Then may I at least be permitted to go to my room? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Thank you. I understand this is the Count de Saint-Hilaire. Yes. Hmm. He's been shot four times. Oh. All right, Mars, it's all yours. Right. jean Chief. I'm going to have a talk with the Count's nephew, Mazarin, Alain Mazarin. If I can worm his address out of Mademoiselle Lavier. <laughs> when Mars is finished, send the body to the morgue, will you? Yes, Chief. Dead? Good God. Mm, when did you last see your uncle, Monsieur Mazarin? The, um, day before yesterday. For any particular reason? To be frank, I was a little short of ready cash. He's been very generous to me in the past. Mm. Was he a wealthy man? He had a small private income, and he owns the block of flats in which he lives. He was comfortably off, but not what you would call a wealthy man. And do you know who will benefit from his death? I understand that I will inherit the bulk of the estate. I see. Have you any idea why he was killed? I know next to nothing. Robbery, perhaps? Well, I doubt it. The windows were locked from the inside, and there was no sign of a forced entry. What does Jacquette think? Oh, that is proving rather hard to discover. She doesn't seem to like you. She doesn't like anybody except my uncle. If she'd had her way, nobody would ever have been allowed near him. Do you think she might have been capable of killing him? Killing him? Jacquette. You hesitate. It's just... Oh, you made me wonder. It's uh, possible, I suppose. She could be jealous. <laughs> well, a lady like that, jealous. <laughs> You mean to say she was in love with it? It's more than possible. They once had an affair. She was very attractive when she was young. I wonder, with the prince's death... The prince? The prince de Verrey. He died on Sunday. Did he now? Have you read the letters yet? I don't follow you. Oh, the letters from the princess de Verrey. No, not yet. But how could Jacquette be connected with them? You'll understand when you've read them. If you like, I'll come to the flat with you. Uh, there might be some way in which I could help. Thank you. Morris and his men are finished, Chief. Dr. Paul will let you have his report later. The body's on the way to the morgue. Uh, thank you, Jean -Dier. This is Monsieur Mazarin, the Count's nephew. How do you do? How do you do? Where's the old lady? Uh, sulking in her room because you wouldn't let her go out. No, well, ask her to come in here, will you? Right, Chief. Now... Let's have a look at those letters we were talking about, Monsieur Mazarin. Good Lord, there are thousands of them. How is it you know who wrote them, Mazarin? Everybody knows in diplomatic circles. In society, I mean. I believe the princess and my uncle wrote to each other nearly every day. Mm. I know it's none of my business, but a person's letters are sacred. Ah, mademoiselle. Uh, can you tell me if the Count owned any firearms? Nor is that any of my business. Nevertheless, did he own a pistol or a revolver? Look, did you hear my question? 
I think he had a revolver of some kind. Mm. Where did he keep it? I don't know. I haven't seen it for a long time. It used to be kept in the chest of drawers in his bedroom. And did Morris find one, Jovier? No, Chief. Mm. You should leave those letters alone. It is private correspondence. Look, perhaps, mademoiselle, you would care to go back to your bedroom or to the kitchen, if you prefer. I expect you want to prepare yourself some lunch. As if I could eat on a day like this. It's incredible. Fifty years of letters. About that. I understand they met and fell in love when my uncle was 26, and after her marriage to the prince, they never met again. Now, why didn't they marry? As was the practice in those days, an arrangement was made between two great families, and, if I may use this word, the princess was obliged to marry the Prince de Varey. Mm. After all, she was the daughter of the Duc de Sac. And she wasn't in love with the prince? No, she was not in love with the prince. Did the prince know about this correspondence? Of course. Isabel would never have conducted such a relationship behind his back. Mm. Hubert understood and agreed not to consummate the marriage. You bear, I take it, is the prince? Correct. So they had no children? They had a son. Huh? Philippe. Now Prince Philippe, since his father's death. An unconsummated marriage at a salle. You will no doubt find many of the answers to your questions in the letters. Well, we have a lot of reading to do, haven't we, jean hmm? uh, Well, thank you, Monsieur Mazarin. I don't think we need to detain you any longer. You've been most helpful. Well, if there's uh, jean else... get La Pointe over here and show Monsieur Mazarin out. Yes, Chief. In the meantime, I'll start on these letters. When La Pointe arrives, you and I shall have lunch. I'm not only hungry, I'm very, very thirsty. You're quiet, Chief? Mm. Well, I'm thinking about these people. The Count, the Princess, even Mazarin. I'm not used to them, to their way of life, to their habits, their way of thinking. But the answer to the Count's death lies there somewhere, I'm sure of it, and it's a world I know nothing about. <laughs> Nor me. Now, those letters, you've read some of them. What do you think? I felt like a voyeur. Jacquette's right. They're private. Nothing to do with the case. Or everything. Hmm? Hmm. But what facts do they offer? The prince was 84 when he died. Fact. The letters indicate that the princess and the count intended to marry if the prince predeceased them. Fact. The princess and the count never met after her marriage to the prince. That's not a fact, chief. Hmm? That's conjecture. Well, uh, something I'm prepared to bet on. Uh, If I remember correctly, she wrote in one letter, um... I, uh, I saw you across the opera house. How distinguished you looked. How I wish that we could be together again. So close and yet so far away it's been so long. The marriage will not be consummated. Fact, the princess had a son. Yeah. Explained in one of the letters, as Mazarin said it would be. Oh? Yeah, uh, my brother-in-law is dead. Um, oh, my dear Armand... The family name cannot be carried on, as we hoped, through him. I've had a long conversation with Hubert. I've been to my confessor. I've wept a great deal. So she bore him a son, Philippe. Fact and duty. I've wept a great deal. And after that? Well, from the letters, the princess seemed to have preserved a most peculiar kind of chastity. The fidelity to the Count, which everybody in those circles appeared to have condoned and respected, including, surprisingly, the Prince. Chastity and fidelity from the Princess, but (laughs) not so much from the Count. That was extraordinary. I think this is the most open, secret love affair I've ever come across. (laughs) Oh, come on, jean we better get back to the Count's flat. Lafont, we brought you back a beer. Oh, thanks, Chief. Anything new? Any phone calls? Oh, mostly from the press and Monsieur Cremier from the Foreign Office. Oh, I'm glad I was at lunch. Oh, and Dr. Paul rang. Mm. And he said the first shot was fired from the front of the desk at point-blank range. And he's certain that that is the shot which killed the Count. Ah. After that, the body fell forward and slipped onto the carpet. How does he know that? Well, because the other shots, three in all, were fired from above, uh, from less than two feet. And to do this, the killer had to walk around to the other side of the desk after the first shot had been fired. Do you see what this means, Chief? Uh, no, you tell me, Lapointe, uh, calmly. Uh, well, 
It looks to me like an act of vengeance or an exceptional amount of hate. I mean, why go on firing if the Count was already dead? And why only four shots? Dr. Paul said a Browning 301 was used, and that holds six cartridges. Yeah, perhaps the gun jammed. Hmm. The point. Borrow a Browning from the constable on duty and ask Mademoiselle Larrieux to come in here. Right, Chief. Do you think it was an act of vengeance, Chief? An act of vengeance? Well, perhaps. Now, what I find strange is that not only haven't we managed to find a pistol, we haven't managed to find any other cartridge cases. Cartridge cases from a Browning 301 should scatter quite a distance. So the killer had the presence of mind to pick them up after he or she had killed the Count. Uh, mm. Here's the Browning, Chief. Oh, good. And Mademoiselle Larrier? Where did you... Come in, Mademoiselle Larrier. You recognise this gun, hmm? Why should I recognise it? Well, it is the type of gun the Count possessed, then. I suppose so. Yeah, the same size, the same weight. Hold it. I most certainly will not. It wouldn't be any use anyway. I never touched the one in the drawer. Uh, you can take it back to the constable, Le uh, Yes, Chief. Now, Mademoiselle, the letters. You knew the Count was in love. Hmm? I used to post his letters to the Princess, if that is what you mean. Are you jealous? I find that an offensive remark. I am 71. My confession... You're a pious woman. Were you ever the Count's mistress? But were you jealous of his affairs? It would seem he had several. I wouldn't know. If he did, they were none of my business. And anyway, he had a right to have affairs if he wished, hadn't he? Hmm. Has the Princess de Vere ever been to this flat? Never. Did you think of ringing the Princess when you discovered the Count was dead? Why not? Because today is the day of the Prince's funeral. Hmm. Well, thank you, mademoiselle. You may go out now, if you wish. Monsieur. Getting her to say anything is like squeezing a dried-out lemon. <laughs> oh, I'm going round to the Count's solicitors. You trot off and see if you can find out anything more about Mazarin. I don't like that man. There's something about him I distrust. Ah, oh, uh, La Pointe. Uh, yes, Chief. Go on questioning the old lady, but gently. Don't press her too hard. You may appeal to her more than Jean Vier or I do. You have a reputation for charming elderly ladies. Me, Chief? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Jean Vier, let's get going. It's very sad, Chief Inspector. I first met Armand, oh, over 60 years ago. Uh, we were together in the sixth form. Tragic. Mm. I suppose he left a will with you? Indeed, yes. I drew it up myself. I've just been looking at it. Does the nephew, Mazarin, inherit everything? Uh, broadly speaking, yes. Uh, that's what he told me. The housekeeper, um, uh, Jacquette Larieux, receives a pension which will enable her to end her days in comfort. As for furniture, pictures, personal belongings, they are bequeathed uh, uh, to an old friend. Isabel de Vary. Oh, you obviously know all about it. Oh, isn't everybody. Had the Count any enemies that you know of? How could he? He never jostled anyone out of position. He waited his turn in the Foreign Office. His memoirs have proved most circumspect. No, the Count was a man of tremendous distinction. Always a, a man of honour. Hmm. I suppose Jacquette Larrier was his mistress. But that is not the word I would choose. Amon was a bon vivant. He rarely let a pretty girl come near him without trying his luck. I told Jacquette was very attractive when young. Oh, indeed, yes. And it is likely that if the opportunity occurred, uh, need I go on? Mm. But, Mistress, no, I think not. Well, thank you, Maitre. You've been most helpful. Ah, yes, I suppose you're in a hurry. Mm. Everybody's in a hurry these days. Don't forget... I'm entirely at your service. Mm, thank you. Uh, yes, in, entirely. Uh, uh, goodbye. I left the old solicitor's office nonplussed. I had the impression of being immersed in a distant past, in a world which had, so to speak, vanished. It's a long time since I've heard the phrase, man of honor. <laughs> the world has changed, June. Well, I was utterly confused. I went into a cafe and ordered a beer. No motive for the Count's murder? Well, there had to be one. People don't commit murder without a motive. 
And all these old people, a crime of passion? God, this seemed to be a ridiculous idea. Two old ladies, one a princess, one a maidservant. Two old men, a prince and a count. Both dead within four days of each other. A coincidence or something more? Where did the nephew Mazarin fit in? A matter of money? Mm, it was possible. Anyway, I drank my beer and went back to the Rue Saint-Dominique. Jean Vier had arrived back before me. Did you know that Mazarin is married, Chief? Eh? Well, there was no wife about when I saw him. Hardly surprising. They've been separated for the past eight years. I managed to track her down, though. And? Well, um, Mazarin's not a very pleasant man, if I can believe her. And I think I can. Mm. Uh, Petty-minded to the point of sadism. Not violent. Uh, he appears to have favoured mental cruelty. So she left him. For a while, he supported her and their two children. Not at the moment, however. Mm, very concise, jean uh, Why doesn't he support her now? Shortage of money, I suppose. Ah. Which means he could have murdered his uncle to hasten his inheritance. Mm. Uh, coffee, Chief. Uh. With the compliments of Mademoiselle Larieux. What? Not as gracious as it would seem. She wanted me out of her kitchen. Mm. <laughs> Did you get any more out of her Lapointe? Nothing. You were wrong about my charms, Chief. At least as far as this elderly lady is concerned. I started a question, very gently as instructed, and was more or less told that I couldn't teach my grandmother to suck eggs. Ah, mm. uh, here. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, there's one person in this case I haven't seen yet, and it's one interview I'm not looking forward to. Who's that with? The Princess de Valet. I thought, um, madame, that I should get in touch with you, if only to give you a few details. Of course. You have read the letters. Uh, <coughs> well... Hmm. I am most grateful to you for coming, Chief Inspector. My first impulse was to go over to the Rue Saint-Dominique when I heard of Armand's death. I would have liked to have seen him just once more. How did you find out about his death? From my son, Philippe. He's staying with me at the moment, together with my daughter-in-law and my two grandchildren. He read of it in the newspapers. Ah, uh, see, I thought perhaps Mademoiselle Larrier might have phoned you. Oh, it wasn't possible. My son has disconnected the telephones. Mm. We've had so many calls since my husband died. What I would like to know, did Armand die in pain? No, madame, he died instantly. In his study, next to the bedroom. Well, you've been there? Once, long ago, with Jacquette's connivance, when Armand was absent. Jacquette lied. It is understandable, is it not? For years, I've been accustomed to living in imagination with him. Much he told me in his letters... But Jacquette arranged matters so that I was able just once to look inside his home. Mm. Now, you and the Count intended to marry if the Prince predeceased you? Most certainly. Was Jacquette jealous? Oh, of his mistresses in the old days. Yes, I think she was. But not of me. Do you think she was once the Count's mistress? There can be no doubt of it. Armand never attempted to conceal anything from me. I remember he wrote once, Jacquette is nervy today. I must remember to pleasure her tonight. Uh, mm. <clears throat> Does it surprise you? Yet it is so natural. Are you aware of the terms of the will? Armand insisted on leaving me his furniture so that if he happened to die before me, I would have an impression to some extent of having been his wife. With his furniture, I shall have his flat reconstructed here. An old woman's whim, no doubt. I haven't long to live, but no matter how little time may be left, I shall live it in his setting, as if I were his widow. Uh, your late husband knew of your plans? But of course. We had nothing to hide. Armand was a very old friend. And your son? We made no attempt at concealment. The whole family knows about my feelings for Armand. And Jacquette knew of your plans to marry? She looked forward to my doing so. Oh, I see. 
Is there anything else you would like to ask me, Chief Inspector? Is there any other way in which I might help you? Mm, uh, yes, I would like to speak to your son, if that's possible. But of course. Will you come this way? Philippe? Uh, yes, Mama? This is Chief Inspector Maigre. He would like a word with you. Oh, of course. Uh, how do you do, Chief Inspector? Yeah, Please, do do? come in. Yeah, thank you. Now, if there is nothing more I can do for you, I... I should like to be left alone. Uh, thank you, madame. You've been most kind. <clears throat> uh, my mother is more upset than she pretends. Uh, uh, do sit down. Yeah. Uh, a cigarette? Thank you. No, 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 thank you. I smoke a pipe. Oh, so do I usually, but uh, not in this house. My mother hates it. Yeah, I, I thought she might. I suppose you want to talk about Saint Hilaire. Well, a few questions, that's all. It's curious coincidence, you must admit. Oh, you mean he and my father dying within four days of each other? Oh, it's a thought. Oh, no more than that. I, I suppose that suicide is out of the question. Hmm? Well, why do you ask that? Had the Count any reason for suicide? You never know what's going on in people's heads. Look at Mother's romance. The unreality of it. The impossibility. All her life she's kept up this mystic love for a man she only saw occasionally from a distance. Oh, I suppose it was harmless enough. Indeed, my father was the first to smile at it. How did you feel about it? It was no concern of mine. <sighs> I suppose not. Well, as a matter of form, I must ask you one particular question. Where was I last night? <laughs> At what time, Chief Inspector? Well, let's say between ten o'clock and midnight. Hmm? I uh, dined with the family and then went for a stroll along the Champs-Élysées at about uh, ten o'clock. Until midnight? <laughs> well, uh, no. Uh, <clears throat> this uh, might strike you as a little peculiar in view of my bereavement, but uh, whenever I come to Paris, I I'm in the habit of... Spending an hour or two with a pretty woman. And mm. This is not possible where I live. And you found one and went to her home? Uh, we went to the hotel in the Rue de Berry. It appears to be her home. There were clothes in the bedroom, personal belongings in the bathroom. Uh, yes, forgive my insistence, but mm. I... well, She was uh, a brunette, not very tall. Uh, she was wearing a green dress, and uh, and uh, she has a beauty spot under one breast. I, I think it was the left one. You should be able to verify. <laughs> yes, of course. Well, oh, thank you. I didn't go back to the Rue Saint-Dominique after leaving the De Verre home. No. Oh, you went to the nearest cafe for a drink instead. Well, <laughs> yes. I needed to sort things out. Of course. Well, it was all so confusing. A man had been killed, but who had killed him and why? Was Jacquette jealous? Was Mazarin, whom his wife accused of mental cruelty, unbalanced? Was the princess telling me the truth? Was she wrong? I believe so. She was a very charming lady. Mm. And Philippe? Mm -hmm. How did he really feel about his mother's ridiculous romantic love affair? Was the bitterness in his mind whenever he considered the situation of his conception? You know, the more I thought about them all, the more confused and angry I got. I'm afraid both La Pointe and Louise had to suffer my ill temper that night. La Pointe, I want you to stay in the Count's flat overnight. Uh, well, she can wait. Put Jean Vier on. Uh, Jean Vier. I want you to check on Philippe de Verre's statement and... Well, of course you don't know what it was. I haven't told you yet. You got a pencil? Yeah, I know your memory is excellent. Look, I want you to go to the hotel in the Rue de Berry. I want you to question the proprietor. Then I went home. Louise suggested the cinema, but instead of going out, I sat grumpily in my corner, puffing at my pipe. <laughs> I'm afraid I drank too much. You can be very bad-tempered. Oh, thanks. Mm. The next morning, I waited at the Quai des Orfèvres for Jean Vier's report. He arrived about 11, looking fresh as a daisy. Absolutely clean, Chief. What de Verre said was true. I found the woman, he accosted her about 10 to 11, stayed about half an hour. Mm. That means he left her before half past 11. Yes, Chief. All right, so he wasn't lying. Right. Come in. 
Morning, Chief Inspector. Ah, oh, I'm always. Sit down. All right, Jean Bier. I'll show you plenty to do. Oh, uh, yes, Chief. <sighs> you read my report? Mm, not yet. Uh, what about the fingerprints in the flat? Well, the counts, of course. Uh, Jacques de Larieux, a few of yours, or oh, many of Cromier. Oh. I've made an inventory of everything we found. Any money? A few thousand francs in a wallet and some change in a drawer in a kitchen. <sighs> it doesn't make sense. Hmm. I've had an idea, Myers. Have you submitted Jacquette to the paraffin test? I wouldn't do that without your permission. Well, you've got it. Go over there. Explain gently. Don't frighten her. How do I explain gently to an old lady that I'm trying to find out if she's fired a pistol during the last 48 hours? No, oh, you'll think of something. Tell her it's a formality. I'll phone you with the result. If you can't get me here, I'll be in the examining magistrate's office. Right. Chief, mm? there's a young man to see you. Julien de Verre, Philippe de Verre's son. Oh. Well, show him in, you here. Right, Chief. Will you go in, please? Thank you. Ah, monsieur, I saw you at my grandmother's house yesterday. I, I wanted to talk to you then, but I couldn't. Not in front of my father. Uh, why not? Uh, sit down. Uh, thank you. Well, it's about my relationship with the Count de Saint-Hilaire. You knew him? Oh, yes. Did your father know about this? He knew. I'm not sure he approved. How did you come to meet him? At a friend's place. I'd wanted to meet him for a long time. I'd heard so much about him, you see, from my grandmother. Mm. And when I told him I was going into the diplomatic service, he was interested and, and very helpful. He invited me to the Rue Saint-Dominique and we talked about my studies and, and my ambitions. After that, I used to see him there occasionally, about once a month. And your grandmother knew about these visits? Oh, yes. Well, the Count insisted that both she and my father should know. Otherwise, I could not have gone. My grandmother and I are very close. We often discussed my visits. She would ask me for details. It was she, in fact, who suggested that I go and see him on the afternoon of the day he was murdered. Really? She wanted to know how he was reacting to the death of my grandfather. I was curious, too. I knew they'd sworn to marry if it ever became possible. The idea appealed to you, huh? It did, rather. <laughs> Those two old people in love for so long. Anyway, what I wanted to tell you, I don't know whether it will be helpful or not, was that the Count didn't seem himself when I saw him. He looked worried and upset. I brought up the question of his possible marriage to my grandmother. It seemed only natural. And he said, um... Oh, I wish I could remember his exact words. But it was something like, it won't be possible. Uh -huh. But what was extraordinary was that, well, that he looked afraid when he said it. I'd swear that he thought his life was in danger. Hmm. Well, that's all, really. It doesn't tell you much, does it? Perhaps I oughtn't to have come. No, you did right to come. Thank you. I'd swear he thought his life was in danger. <laughs> Young Julien de Beret had worried me so. So what did you do? Well, as I always do when I'm worried. I moped around the Cadiz of Erve, putting my spoke into everyone's work. <laughs> <laughs> well, then in the afternoon, Moyes came to see me. Well, Moyes? It's positive. Hmm? The paraffin test on Jacquette Larrier's hands. My God. She's definitely fired a gun in the last 24 hours. Uh, well, what are you going to do? Tell me, Moyers, how does one arrest an old woman of over 70? You've recently used a firearm, mademoiselle. The test we carried out showed that. Now, particles of powder and chemical substances are ingrained in a person's skin and remain for some time when that person has used a firearm. How did it happen? I have nothing to say. <laughs> what have you done with the gun? I don't know what your motive was, but I can hazard a guess. You've lived with the Count for a very long time. You've been as intimate with him as any two human beings can be. 
If he hadn't been killed, he would have married the princess. Would you have kept your position in the household? Mademoiselle, I have been questioning you for over an hour. Your silence is not helping you. It's possible that this is a case of diminished responsibility. Your lawyer will certainly argue that this was a crime of passion. If you plead guilty, you will have every chance of moving the jury. I have nothing to say. Look, you're entitled to a lawyer. Do you want me to give you a list of lawyers? It would be of no use. Well, shall I choose one There lawyer? isn't any point. You admit you shot your employer? I have nothing to say. Is there anybody you would like to see? The princess, perhaps? Mademoiselle, we have material evidence that you fired one or more of those shots. Will you please tell me why? Am I entitled to see a priest? You want a confessor? I am simply asking permission to talk to a priest for a few minutes. That is all. The Abbe Barrow. He should be at the Sainte Clotilde Presbytery. Very well. How long has the Abbe been with her now, Chief? Hmm? No, oh, 25 minutes. Do you think it's going to help? I don't know. I feel the solution is somewhere near, but... I distrust the evidence. A crime of passion <laughs> has a ridiculous sound. Yes, yes. Now we're faced on this case with people whose very existence I never suspected. <clears throat> Their way of life is so unfamiliar to me that I, I can't... Oh. Can you come in now, Chief Inspector? I must apologize for keeping you so long, but Mademoiselle Larrière has asked me a very difficult question, and I have had to consider it most carefully. Yes, not at all. Oh, you look tired, mademoiselle. May I stay? I may be able to help. Yes, of course. Mademoiselle, as you are aware, is extremely devout, and it is her party which has led her to adopt an attitude which I have felt it my duty to persuade her to abandon. What has been worrying her is the thought that the Count might not be given a Christian burial. She intended to wait until after the funeral before saying anything. The Count committed suicide. I'm afraid that is the truth of the matter. But I have told Mademoiselle Larrier we have no proof that he didn't repent in his last few moments. No death is as instantaneous in the eyes of the Church as your medical files might suggest. Tell the Chief Inspector what you told me, Mademoiselle. I was in bed when I heard a single shot. I rushed into the study. Armand... The Count was sprawled on the carpet as you found him. The pistol was on his desk. There was no doubt that he was... My first impulse was to telephone the Princess, but it was nearly midnight. I, I didn't want to disturb her. How long before you used the pistol yourself? I... I don't know. Ten minutes, perhaps. I knelt down beside him. And I said a prayer. I couldn't let it be known that he had... I had to make it look like murder. So I stood up, took hold of the pistol, and I fired without looking, and asked him and him to forgive me. I pulled the trigger until it wouldn't work anymore. I don't know anything about guns. The next morning, before I went to the Foreign Office, I threw the gun and the... The cartridge cases? ...into the Seine, from the Pont de la Concorde. Do you know why the Count committed suicide? He believed he had cancer of the stomach. And he was a very healthy man, according to the police report. I spoke to his doctor once, and he seemed unworried. A little too much wine, he suggested, a touch of indigestion. 
nothing more serious. But I know that the Count didn't believe him because he consulted several other doctors. For confirmation of his fears? I suppose so. An old friend of his died of cancer after two years' illness. I remember him saying then, why don't they let him die? If I were in his place, I should ask them to help me go. He was obsessed by the idea that he was suffering in the same way, so that when he heard of the prince's death... I'm beginning to understand. The Count expected to be bedridden, like his friend, just when there was the possibility of his entering into a real life, no matter how short, with the woman he'd loved for 50 years. He could see no future for her except as a sick nurse, and that he could not accept. Well, I must make a phone call, mademoiselle, and then I think you'll be free to go. Armand will be given a Christian burial. I don't believe the church will refuse its last blessing to the Count de saint -Hilaire. It's a case I'll never forget, you know. It's a long time ago now, and I've had time to think about it. Yes? So much of what I've had to do is sordid, harsh, disturbing. But that time... That time 